Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. This is my first look video at the FMS 1500mm MOA Glider. Before we get started, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by FMS, so thanks to FMS for sending this plane out for review. I'll also let you know that this is the second video in a beginner series that we're running this week. We're taking a look at a number of beginner airplanes and FMS merchandise during the week. We're taking some first look videos, some flight videos, and then after that, we're gonna run a live stream, and during the live stream, we're gonna give away a whole bunch of coupon codes, free airplanes, and merchandise. And as part of that live stream, I get to give away one of the planes. And the way I decided to handle it is I wanna reward people who are watching the videos. So in order to win the plane that I'm gonna give away, you're gonna to have to know numbers from every video. Here's the number for today's video, the number four. You'll need that on the live stream in order to be eligible and able to win the plane that I'm giving away. The number for the MOA video is four. With that out of the way, let's get into the airplane. A couple of key specifications on this plane. It is a 59 inch wingspan. It's got an overall length of 33 inches. Its flying weight is around 627 grams. The motor is a 3015, 1700 kV. It's got a 20 amp ESC and it is a four channel setup, so four servos. No flaps on this one, so you won't get the full crow effect. The center of gravity is between 53 and 58 millimeters from the leading edge. It's a nine by five two bladed prop and it uses a two cell 1300 milliamp hour battery, two cells on this one. They say the approximate flying duration is about eight minutes. And looking at the experience level on this one, they say the experience level is intermediate, but I think that might have to do more with the hand launch characteristics rather than the actual flying, because just looking at the plane, I'm sure it's gonna be a stable flyer, fairly easy to manage in the sky. And according to the book, assembly time is about 30 minutes. So with the specs out of the way, let's take a look at the plane. All right, I've got the plane out of the box and this one is a ready to fly version. So it comes with a kind of generic little transmitter, nothing to write home about on this one. Just a very basic transmitter. It uses AA batteries in the back. So you see a slot for four AA batteries back there. And then for the controls, it's just very basic controls, not computerized. They have servo reversing here. A couple of buttons down here, I'm not exactly sure what those are for, maybe to turn it on and off, probably. Some trim switches, a little neck lanyard ring, and the standard control. So the gimbals, you know, no, again, nothing to write home about. Uh, the idea behind these types of transmitters is for a beginner to get the plane and the transmitter and everything they need to go fly and decide whether or not they wanna stay in the hobby. And if they do, they can, you know, keep flying with this transmitter if they like, or, you know, eventually upgrade to a bigger radio. So the radio is included with that one, as are the other things you need to get up and running, including this little AC3S10 charger and an AC power cord. There are no settings for this one. You basically just plug in the balance lead and away it goes. So no mains connection on this one. You plug your balance lead in right there on the bottom, AC lead on the top, and the charger will take care of the rest. And those parameters, by the way, are discussed in the manual. Next up is the hardware kit, and you guys know how I feel about the hardware kit, right? The smaller the bag, the faster the assembly goes, and this is a really small bag, so I think this one goes together pretty quickly. There's just a couple of plastic pieces that look like they're there to hold wings on, and a few screws, and that's about it. Very little in terms of hardware on this plane. And you get a USB-C cable for the Reflex V2 gyro that's inside. I do like the Reflex V2 gyro. They're very basic, but they're configured out of the box and they work with the plane. So that's kind of important for beginners. Beginners have enough going on without worrying about how to configure a gyro. FMS does a pretty good job getting these gyros working with the planes out of the box. So you don't have to worry about that. The gyro is already set up and ready to go. And then lastly, in terms of accessories, there is a little 1300 milliamp hour 2S battery. So very lightweight battery. It's got the JST style leads on there and the 2S balance lead for charging. Now let's take a look at the plane. I'm gonna tell you guys, when I saw the MOA on the FMS website, I thought it was kind of cool looking. I like the scheme. Red and white is always good with me because you get a lot of nice contrast while you're flying. So I'm very happy with that. And another thing that I like is the landing gear. I do like seeing a wheel on the bottom because who likes to see their plane scuffed up, right? It's ideally you don't scuff up the plane. And when you land on a runway or even in the grass and dirt, you're, wind, you're gonna wind up scuffing it up. So I do like to see the wheel on the bottom. I think that's very cool. 
There is a little bit of a ventilation hole back here, but I'm going to tell you from what I can see, it looks plugged. So we might have to take care of that. I'm not exactly sure what the deal is there. It looks like that is the Reflex V2 gyro right there in the ventilation hole and it's plugged up. So there's no, there's not going to be much airflow moving through there when it's plugged up. Might have to take a look at that. And then there's an air intake right here. That's where the air goes in. And as you can see, as I've been moving the plane around, it's got the folding prop and spinner already installed on the motor, which is very nice. And then the canopy has got a tongue latch up front, which is good. That's the way it should be done. And that gives you access to the battery tray that's got your JST connector to connect to your ESC and a little bit of a Velcro strap to hold that battery down on the battery tray. So everything you need to get going, very simple setup, nothing to it. All right, let's take a look at the electronics. Inside, there is a receiver already installed, and this is an FMS branded S4. I'm not sure what protocol that is, but evidently it should work fine with their ready to fly transmitter. And it's a single antenna on the back. And then there's a couple of leads in here that are going to be for ailerons. So that's how you connect the ailerons. And I'm sure everything else is already wired up to the Reflex V2 gyro. In the back, you can see the servos for the elevator and rudder. They are right there. No adjustments on these, no quick connects or anything like that. So no adjustments required in there. And then as I mentioned, looking at the exhaust port, the Reflex V2 gyro is tucked away right down here on the bottom. And here's a quick look at the starboard side of the fuselage. Everything looks clean there. There's a little tail skid on the back for landing and you've got your push rods for elevator and rudder already installed. The rudder's connected and then when you install the elevator, that'll connect right here. Fuel tubing is in place on the clevis and I do like that. That's a nice touch by FMS. Next up are the wings. I thought the wings on this plane were actually kind of cool. They've got this kind of Klingon bird of prey motif going on, right? So the wings actually are reverse gull wings. They go up and then across. So a little bit of dihedral in the center, but the wings from here on out are straight. So it's kind of a cool design, a little unusual. No issues on the leading edge. It looks perfectly straight. There's the first section and there is the second section. There we go, second section. And then on the trailing edge, remember, no flaps, but there is enough meat on the bone here if you wanted to put flaps in. You could cut flaps out of the material here and go ahead and install a servo. It looks like there's plenty of material if that would make you happy. The servo wires for the ailerons are concealed by a beauty tape and they are EPO hinges. The servos are already connected. They are nine gram digital servos. They're connected with a clevis and fuel tubing on the control horn. And interestingly, on this plane, no plate on the top. So normally FMS uses plates on the top. On this one, no such luck. This one is a glue-in arrangement. But I do see something kind of interesting. They've got a couple of little barbs right here going out to the side. So I think that'll help prevent torque in the aileron, which is good. It gives more contact area and more to pull on when the control surface is being moved. And then out here on the edge, you've got little blisters, and that is to keep your wing tips from getting marked up when you land on the runway. Very nice touch. Not many airplanes do that. That is a nice touch. Good job, FMS. Next up is the port wing, and we'll take a look at the leading edge on this one. I gotta tell you guys, the graphics on this look really cool. I like the red and white. I'm a huge fan of red and white, and the reason, part of the reason for that is because you get such good contrast in the sky. There's the bottom of the wing with the beauty tape covering the servo lead and the servo already installed, a Z-bend on the servo horn, a clevis to the control horn, and fuel tubing already in place with the same type of control horn with the little spars sticking out on the side. And of course, you got the same blister on the wing tip to keep your wings from getting marked up while you land. Here's a horizontal stabilizer, and I like what I see here. You've got a couple of screw holes that allow the horizontal stabilizer to be captured on the airframe instead of glued in. That is much better. It does use a torque tube, and it's got this plastic connector. The torque tube's already installed. And then same deal on the control horn. It's the same as what we saw on the ailerons. No top plate, but it does have spars going out to the side, and they are EPO hinges. Don't forget to flex your EPO hinges before you attach those servos. You just need to loosen them up just a little bit so you don't give those servos a hard way to go. And the last bit is the wing spar, and that comes bent at a V. That is not a mistake. That's by design, and that's how the wings will connect to the airframe. And last up is the manual. Again, a beginner manual. It's black and white. It'll do the job. They do give some information about battery charging. So they've got your min, typical, and max voltage on your battery. 4.2 for you beginners out there. That's where you want to stop. 
and they explain the charging current on the AC3S10 charger, and they explain how to use the charger, which is all good for beginners out there. It's good to understand that lipos can be dangerous, so pay attention to those instructions. Next up, they show how to install control horns when that's necessary. I didn't really see a need for that on this plane. It looked like all the control horns were already installed. And then step-by-step -step walking through the assembly on this plane. So very simple instructions, and then a little bit of information about setting up your ESC and your transmitter setup and which way the controls work. A little bit of information about how to measure the CG and where it's located. And I will also note this manual is only in English, no other languages. So no French, no Russian, no Chinese, it's English only. A little bit of information on what to do before flying and where to fly. And that's about it. So nice manual. I think it looks really good. In addition to the manual, they also include an addendum for the Reflex V2 gyro right there. And they include an addendum for the six channel transmitter right there. As part of the beginner series, FMS also sent me some FMS accessories for model airplanes. During each first look video, I'm going to show a new accessory. This time it's navigation lights. This one includes a set of white, green, and red, and these are LiPo powered. These are self-powered. You don't need to do any wiring. There's a little LiPo battery right there, and I'm gonna turn this on and I'll try and shield it because I'd just be warning, blinking's about to happen, so if you're sensitive to that kind of thing, be aware. But I'm about to turn on the blinker so you can get a look, and I'll try and shield it so it doesn't blow the camera out because these are very bright. So there's a button right here on the side. When you press that button, it turns the blinker on, and hopefully you can see it blinking through my hands. And then if you press the button again, it changes the blinking pattern. So now it's a solid blink instead of a double blink. And then you can press it again and it turns into a slow blink. And then finally, if you press it again, it turns it off. These are also stick on units, no wiring required. All you have to do is use the double sided tape they include, it's very thin. You apply that to the light, pull the other side off, put it on your model and away you go. And then in terms of charging, they include a little USB it looks like a voltage regulator of some sort, but it's a little USB adapter, so a USB micro cable there to a red and black lead here. And that just plugs into a very small port right here on the light. So when you need to charge your LiPos up, you just plug that in, connect it to a USB power source for a little while, and it'll charge it up. Very nice add-on if you want to add navigation lights to an airplane like the MOA that doesn't already include them. That wraps up my first look at the 1500 millimeter FMS MOA glider with Reflex V2. If you like this kind of content, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the bell so you know new videos hit the channel. Thanks to FMS for sending this airplane out for review. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.